Hello crafty friends. Have you ever had an art journal page fail? Well this is one of my fails. I'm really not happy with the way this turned out. I did it a couple of months ago trying some new techniques but the colors don't work. It's really just messy. So I'm going to take it all apart and start again. I'm not quite sure how all this is going to come off so I'm just trying to remove the layers as I can. This was the first piece of art that I tried using silica beads as texture and they are stuck down quite fast so I'm just trying to scrape them off. I'm using a palette knife and then I'm also going to take a box cutter soon and try and unstick those. There's also quite a bit of cheesecloth which is stuck down quite fast. So I'm just going to work through this trying to get as much of this layering off to get a plain base page again so that I can work over with a brand new design. Now if you've seen my video on how I prep my art journal where I stick multiple pages together this has actually come in good use because as I'm working through this it actually um, tears the top layer of the page I was working with and reveals the underneath and because I only used a glue stick to adhere the papers it actually peels off quite easily and as I, although I started with a bit of a struggle when I first started trying to take all this off eventually it works out quite well because I can actually just tear the top layer the top page off and reveal a brand new clean page to start with. There is a small section left in the spine which I'm just re-gluing down with a glue stick and then I'm going to reinforce that with a piece of masking tape. It's very easy to paint over masking tape. It creates great texture so I don't mind that at all and I'm just going to try and do the same now on the second page. So perhaps this is not really working over an existing flop or fail. It's just basically starting again but I'm removing the old page that I wasn't happy with. And as you can see it's coming off really nice and easily and I'm nearly ready to start my new page. If you'd like to see how I actually prep my art journals to start painting in them, I will link that video below in the description of this video. I have a rough idea of how I want this page to look. Um, not 100%, we'll just see how we go, but I do have a rough idea. And I want to start by doing a collage background before I start painting. And I don't want this one to be just random collage like I normally do. I want to make it in strips with strips of different cardstock and different papers. I have some vintage music sheet paper and then also some paper from a book where the text is quite large which I quite like. So I'm just going to tear these strips roughly the same width. I'm just using my ruler as a guide and making them one ruler width. These are pages from an old encyclopedia. I've also found some cardstock where I like the colors of. I'm going for a bit of a pink or maroon kind of um, feeling. So I'm just trying to find some papers that suit that. Quite subtle, nothing too loud, but with the pink tones. If you're enjoying my video, I would love if you give me a thumbs up and even leave me a comment. Also subscribe to my channel. That would be awesome. Hit the little bell so you're notified every time I upload new content. I have lots of tutorials, junk journal flip throughs and process videos coming your way. I'm now going to stick down all my strips and I'm just using a glue stick. You could also use Mod Podge, gel medium or craft glue. Whatever you have handy or whatever you have in your craft room. I'd love to know if you've ever had an art journal or any kind of craft flop and what you've done with it. Have you created something new over it? Have you just hidden it away in a cupboard? Do let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear. I'm also going to add some strips of masking tape in between the joining of my strips. This is just to add additional texture and I do like uh, the affected leaves when you add color or gesso on top. I'm not putting it along all the strips just randomly and also some smaller bits. You don't have to do this step if you don't have any masking tape but I really quite enjoy adding masking tape to my art journaling, to my collaging and now I'm just going to trim off the excess. And now the next step I'm going to add some white gesso. This is my probably my favorite product to use in any of my projects. I think there's only very few projects that I haven't used gesso on. I just love what it can do to the project. I like the way it can soften the backgrounds, it can add texture, it can make nice opaque sections. 
very white and stark. It really is a very versatile product and you can paint over it because it creates like a it's like a primer for your pages and also waterproofs them i really really love it and i think if it's only one thing i ever had to buy as a art product it would be white gesso at this point if you compare the left to the right pages where i have not done the gesso on the right it's very um plain you've just got the strips of the paper up and down it's just been stuck down like a just a collage it's not doesn't i think have any interest so if you compare it to where i've added the gesso where the lines are softened and they blended it creates like a misty look the um, underneath um, papers are shining through but they're not very bright it's just very very subtle and some are darker some are lighter it really is a lovely effect I prefer to use my fingers when I do gessoing in this technique. You could also use a paintbrush. I also have a baby wipe with me, which I use to also try and blend some of the edges or to lift some of the gesso if I've made it too dark. I found these interesting botanical sketches in the encyclopedia that I was using for the text and I think they'll create really good interest on this page. So I'm just going to tear them out with the ruler. I'm not cutting them straight. I want the, the raw edge and I'm just going to add them and balance them um, over the pages and then I'm going to stick those down with Mod Podge. These images will act as my focal points. I'll have three focal points or places of interest across the page. Normally I tend to concentrate on one focal point which is quite bold and bright. This one is going to be, we're going to have three places of interest and it's going to be a lot more subtle. It's going to be a subtle page overall. Um, I don't want it too bright, I want it soft, romantic and florally. You'll notice I'm also adding a layer of Mod Podge over the images. You could also use um, clear gesso for this. This is just to waterproof them so if we add color on top, they won't buckle. Just as an additional bit, I'm adding a little bit more masking tape just on some of the edges of my botanical sketches. To soften the edges and so that the botanical sketches don't look like they've just been stuck on the top, I'm blending the edges in a bit with the gesso. Once the gesso is dry, I'm going to add my color. I'm just going to use two colors in this one. I'm going to keep it quite simple and I'm using the color straight out of the tube. I'm starting by applying the color directly onto the page and then scraping it down with a palette knife. But then I found that it was a little bit too harsh and too bright. So I'm just softening it with a baby wipe and blending it in a little bit more. This is acrylic paint and these are from Kaiser Craft here in Australia. It's called Kaiser Color and I'm using the colors hot pink and burgundy. I want to get a bit of a watery effect to let the colors flow. So I've added some of the acrylic paint into my little paint palette and I've added some water to water it down. I'm applying it to the edge of the page and then spraying it with water and allowing the color just to run down and create some patterns. I do dry up some of the drips. I don't want all the drips. I do leave some. It all depends on your personal preference. I'm now going to add the darker tone, which is the burgundy. Um, I'm just going to use these two colors. I just wanted something really simple and not too, I don't want the colors to fight with each other. So I think these go quite well and they're quite subtle.
I'm going to add very little bit of a splatter effect with the darker burgundy. This is just to detract a little bit from just having a monotonous watery background, just to have a pop of interest. Once this is all dried well, I'm going to do some more blending with the white gesso. I do this to soften the edges between the color and the background, because sometimes there where the watery marks are, it can be quite um, like a very defined line. And for this piece, I don't want that. So I'm just blending it in to give it a softer look. For my next layer, I'm going to do some stenciling. This stencil that I have is of leaves. You could use any kind of stencil that you have. And I'm using it with a mixed media paste, which is a two-in-one gesso and modeling paste available from Little Birdie Crafts. I'll put the link below and there's also a discount available if you use my link. The stencil is from the Reject Shop here in Australia. I'm using a baby wipe just to soften some of the edges of the stenciling. Once the mixed media paste is dry, I'm going to add an accent of gold. This gold that I have is beautiful and metallic. It's actually an acrylic paint. And I cannot tell you where I got it from because it doesn't have a name. It came in a Christmas craft kit many years ago that I'd bought for my daughters. I think it was like a wooden Christmas tree you had to decorate. And there was a tube of paint inside, which was this gold, which turned out to be magic. So I don't have a brand name. I don't even know where to get it again. So I use it quite sparingly because it's really beautiful. It's super metallic. It's got a beautiful luster to it. And I'm just going to add a few little bits just in the background of my leaves, just as a pop of color and a beautiful accent. Makes it more elegant and rich. And for this page, I've decided I'm going to hand write a quote. Instead of trying to find a sentiment that I can cut out and paste, I'm going to hand write it. So I found a beautiful one that I think is quite suitable and I'm using a black fine liner pen just to write it in cursive. It reads, like wildflowers, you must allow yourself to grow in all the places people thought you never would. I really hope you enjoyed this video and were inspired to create your own and also to not worry if any of your pages are fails or flops in your eyes. You can always just redo them and I really love the way this turned out. I much prefer it to the first flop that I showed you. Let me show you a close-up of the details. I'm really, really happy with this and I'm thinking I might do a very similar technique and page on a canvas that I can maybe hang in my art room. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye.